Hi folks, welcome back to my channel. My name is Noel and today we are going to talk about the Under Armour Hover Machina. Machina? Machina. Under Armour Hover Machina. I received these shoes in the week leading into community quarantine and I've only been running with it in the parking garage of my condo complex. But still that being said, I've already logged like more than 50 kilometers in these shoes which only goes to show how much i've been running during this period and also goes to show how much i love running in these shoes but before i go into that i'm going to go back to my first impressions post quoting from the press release in my blog the makina is the first to feature a new partially uncaged under armor hover midsole so the cage supports underneath the midsole while the sides are bare hover. This slashes the weight considerably despite the Makina featuring 20% more hover cushioning than the Hover Infinite. It also features a two-pronged carbon-filled P-Box propulsion plate that helps the foot transition faster from landing to toe off. So you will see here this black part that's already the P-Box carbon-filled propuls propulsion plate. And you'll see that there are two spots here up top. So basically this propulsion plate goes from here, Y's out here, and leading into the um, outer parts of the sole. The Hover Makina weighs 283 grams for the men's size 9 and 241 grams for the women's size 7. So this is a size 8.5. In hand, it does feel kind of chunky but on feet it almost disappears under your feet so my first impression of the under armor hover makina is pretty favorable just the comfort factor make these great to walk around in on a grocery or mall errand but when i started running in them i felt good uh, one month later i would still say that these are really really comfortable to run in i have run in them for easy kilometers all the way up to my current tempo paces and I found that they're still really really comfortable and I never have any knee aches or back aches running in them which I normally would when I'm running in less cushion shoes so that should tell you something about how much the hover cushioning is able to kind of absorb the impact but that doesn't even detract from how lively these shoes feel. Now, despite the bulkiness in this sole, you'll see it's, it looks pretty bulky, right? But despite that, I found that these feel relatively low to the ground and that when I step on the ground in them, I don't have to shift my weight from side to side or from front to back to try to find um, stability in them. But basically, like I said, they disappear under your feet and uh, all you have to do is run and not think about having the shoes on your feet. I also think that the shoe itself works well for my running technique, which is I'm not excessively bouncy, but um, I also don't rely on the shoe to kind of help me toe off very much because I pick up my feet from using hip flexors, etc. So I don't really bounce through my, uh, my stride. And so these shoes were really good for that. You'll notice that it's not too aggressively shaped. Some shoes really have this rocker shape to help you move through that stride. But this one is relatively flat. Uh, it just gives you enough to kind of move through from landing to toe off. But it doesn't really rock you through your stride. And that suits my running form quite well. So before I started running in these exclusively through the community quarantine period, I also was able to take these shoes out and compare them with Boost and React foam shoes. And that's because I was able to get to a treadmill and really basically swap the shoes out um, running about a kilometer or two in each of them. And uh, uh, running in Boost versus React versus Hover, 
I really saw how um, the boost felt a little dead. Like they didn't have any spring in them. The React felt quite stiff. And the hover felt like the Goldilocks of it all. It was just right. <laughs> And so that's why I started running in these exclusively through the quarantine period because this is definitely a solid trainer. So I basically run 50 kilometers in these and the soles haven't shown too much wear. I'm not sure. I think maybe this, um, the material here is not as hardy as the blown rubber. So it, it will show more wear and tear. So if you do land on the inside part of your foot more, then you have to watch out for that. The outside though, especially in places where um, the shoe or the foam would compress and then release again as you move through your foot stride, it doesn't really show a lot of wrinkling, which I'm happy about because I can't tell you how many shoes I've gone through already, which uh, they show the wear and tear on the outside part of the midsole and so it makes the shoe look super old. But these, if you don't look at the sole of the shoe, these look pretty brand new still. I could definitely see myself using these for a long time, not just because they're comfortable but also because they don't show their age quite readily. So Under Armour has also been pushing a different aspect of these shoes. It's the connected capability of these shoes. Um, there's a pod embedded in each of their soles, which um, is able to store information. And then that information can be synced to the Map My Run app on your phone. And the app decodes all that information and spits out metrics like foot strike angle, ground contact time, stride length metrics, um, distance, and uh, elevation change. But that's only if you're running with the, sh with the phone connected with your shoes. Um, if you're running just with the shoes and then later on syncing the data into the app, uh, it doesn't have the elevation profiles and the distance measurements can be quite off. I know that Under Armour has been really pushing people to use the Map My Run app. And um, from first glance, the Map My Run app seems pretty good, especially if you don't own any other thing that helps you track your activities. But for somebody who uses several different platforms to track and analyze my activities and the data generated from them, I do think that having Map My Run in addition to everything else that I use is a little bit superfluous. Although I really do appreciate that these shoes are able to give me things that might help me improve my run technique. For instance, the foot strike angle. Um, if your foot strike angle is closer to zero degrees, then um, you're either a midfoot or a forefoot runner. And the further away it goes from zero degrees, uh, that means you're landing a little bit more towards the rear of your foot. And uh, I have been consistently recording nine degree foot strike angles, which means I'm still mildly rear foot striking, but I've also been able to, based on that data, shift more mid foot. So I've moved from a nine degree foot strike angle to an eight degree foot strike angle. And it's also helped me kind of see that I've been over striding, which is why I do land towards the rear of my foot. And so stride length metrics, I've been able to shorten my stride length without changing the pace that I've run. And it's, it's really helped take some impact off my legs as well. Now with ground contact time, uh, they say that if you have a, an overly long stride length, then your ground contact time also increases. But I've found that I actually have more ground contact time when running at slower paces. So, inconclusive.
But in any case, those metrics are really nice and useful to help you kind of see if you can improve your run stride. It is kind of annoying though because um, Under Armour Market says as this is the pair of the shoes that you can just lace on. You can leave your watch, you can leave your phone, you can just run. And then when you come back, that's when you can sync your data. Um, but the implementation of this in actual practice is a little patchy because uh, if you start your activity by just walking and then you move into a run gradually, sometimes the shoes don't start recording at all. And so Under Armour recommends or Map My Run recommends that you take your phone with you and you sync the shoes with the phone and then you start your activity on your phone if you plan to graduate from walking into running within the same session. That's kind of frustrating because you're trying to reduce the number of gadgets that you bring with you anyway. So um, having to use the app to start the activity kind of seems... Uh, it like it's like it, it's working at cross purposes with the um, wirelessness of having just the shoes. Now the the distance metrics are also kind of off. I think there's this, an accelerometer or something in the pod that's in these shoes, which is how it's able to estimate the distance between toe off and landing, but. Um, yeah, if you're not using your app to measure the distance that you've actually run by a GPS, then it's a little... I've seen it be off by about a kilometer. So, um, yeah, you always have to have your phone with you. And if you already have a GPS watch and whatnot, it just feels like it adds another layer of complexity to what is already a very complex data recording session when you run. I'm also concerned that the pod is not reusable. You can't transfer it from one shoe to another. You might recall that Nike and Adidas also had their own little pod uh, recording experiments. Nike had the plus so you had the little orange thing that slotted into a space in a shoe's midsole and then you put the insole in over it and it recorded your data and then adidas had the mypod which you could lace on the laces and it it did the same thing it counted the steps counted impact it estimated calories that sort of thing so the the connected pod inside these shoes sounds like the same thing but the annoying thing is that you can't take it with you from shoe to shoe so once these shoes are past their life cycle and they, the soul's gone dead you toss the shoes and the pod and then you go and buy yourself a new pair of shoes and you're, you're basically buying a new pod um and it's it would have been fine if the price range were basically the same between a connected shoe and a shoe that didn't have the connected capability but looking and comparing between old versions of shoes it basically added a 2000 peso premium and now these shoes only exist as connected versions so you don't have unconnected versions so you can't really opt out of buying the pod when you want to buy this shoe so it, it seems a little wasteful. Um, I don't know if Under Armour is going to go into selling the pods as themselves so that you could use their Map My Run ecosystem even while wearing a different brand of shoe. Uh, so that's, that's basically it. That's basically my gripe about um, the connected part of owning a pair of these shoes now you can obviously not um use the map my run app you can obviously not sync your shoe to your phone um because the date the data that you get from these shoes basically uh, other things can also track mostly the same data the only thing that you might not be able to track is the foot strike etc etc but 
um, it's still in its infancy. Maybe in the future, the connected series might offer more metrics and they might offer more value for you buying these shoes. For now, I really wouldn't buy the Under Armour Hover Machina for their connected capabilities, but I would say that I am impressed by the shoe itself, its form factor, its cushioning, its responsiveness, its, its basic performance overall. I would say that it's a really, really good daily trainer and something that you can also bring with you towards your tempo runs and maybe some long distance races. So that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. This was the Under Armour Hover Machina after exclusive use through the last four weeks. Definitely a shoe that you should look into at least trying out in store after the community quarantine has lifted. If you have any questions, comments, insights if you've used these shoes already and want to let me know what you think please do leave it in the comments below if you haven't yet please like this video and subscribe to my channel and i will see you again next time bye